a very warm welcome to everybody. I am really excited to present the preliminary figures, and I want to really point out that we are talking about preliminary figures of the robotics markets for 2022. The final figures will be out on 26th of September, and of course things might change, but we would like to share with you what we can see so far, and the focus today will be very much on Europe. And the reports, you know how they look like, so of course I encourage everybody uh, when they are out to di deep dive into them a bit more. But let's look upon the robotic market now for the last decade. And what we can see is that yes, we had a growth in 2022, even though it seems right now to be a rather moderate growth, but we had the big jump to over half a million robots in 2021. And that is actually what we can see now, a small increase with about 2%. I think it's interesting to react upon the last decade, the last 10 years. This is more than three times how the market has been growing. And uh, if we think about any other industry, it's not that many industry that can show this kind of growth. 3.3 times uh, in just 10 years. And in those 10 years, we had two years of COVID. It's a rather remarkable um, experience, I must say. And I think we see it also here with the amount of people that was here today or yesterday and will be here rest of the week. If we break it down a little bit more into the industries, uh, since a couple of years, the electronics is the largest, and it still is what we can see now, but the growth was rather moderate, only about plus 1% on the electronics. Automotive continues to be the second largest, but there there was a strong growth, a much stronger than what we've seen the last year, with a growth up to 14%. So a really strong automotive year. Metals and machinery went back a little bit, and, and food also, plastics went up a bit. But the, the big two uh, remains, but they are now more or less head, head to head. I don't want to imply there is a competition here, but they start to be very similar now with a, with a strong growth of automotive. If you look upon it from a regional point of view, uh, of course, Asia, uh, Australia remains with over 380,000. With, and here it is where we have most uncertainties in the figures. It looks like a slight increase, but again, let's see what that will end in the end. Um, Europe had a very strong year, plus 3%, and that led to an all-time high with 84,000 robots. So a really strong year. And then the Americas also had a strong year with a double-digit growth of 12%, but of course not the enormous growth figures we saw last year, but then don't forget we had the big jump due to the years after COVID. Looking at the 10 largest country, China continues what we also saw last year is more than half of the market and more than every second robot installed is in China, followed then by Japan, US, Korea and Germany on the fifth place. If you look upon it only from the European point of view, Germany is the largest market and it's a factor 10. So 10 robots in China to one in Germany, uh, more or less precisely. Followed by Italy, France, Spain and Poland that are now the five largest European markets. And I will go down into a little bit more detail because there is a lot of differences between these different European markets. Uh, but before I do that, um, we'll just look upon Europe as a total. So a growth of 3% up to 84, which is clearly the strongest year uh, since 10, well, ever. So really a new record here. So I think that's an interesting reflection and let's see how this will continue. Um, if you looked upon the other, we had a strong automotive growth globally. That is not the same in Europe. Here we had that automotive went back 3%, so opposite the global trend. And metals and machinery, though, on the other hand, grow 12%, and that had a negative trend globally. So these two markets are, in European point of view, uh, just opposite the rest of the world. What you also can see is that there is a large category called unspecified, and we hope that we will manage to make that a bit smaller, because of course, if a large part of this unspecified is in certain segments, this can adjust the picture. Um, but this is what we can see so far, and the whole unspecified will not go away, but hopefully part of it we can get more clarity into. 
also looked upon Europe only with EU. So if we take only the EU states, um, then the 27 of them, then we have as a double strong growth. So this growth is not 3%, but 6%. So the EU countries has clearly outgrown the rest of Europe in the last year. Then Germany, um, not a new time high. It's still not up uh, on the 2018 level, but almost very close by, and a strong growth of 3% here. The automotive sector did go back with minus 22%. Uh, while the metal sector, 29% up, plastic, 35% up. So very much differences between the, the segments here. But all in all, uh, strong growth also in Europe, with, or in Germany, with 3%. Going then to Italy, and here we have a double-digit growth now, a 10% growth. And in Italy, more or less, all markets um, increase, or segments increase, but also here automotive and back with about minus 22% in, in Italy. And this is now an all-time high, so Germany was just below 2018, this is just above. So a very strong year for the robotics in, in Italy. Um, going to France, even stronger, 15% growth in France, and also here a clear all-time high. And in France, uh, a little bit different there, the automotive actually did grow with 19%, and also here metals and machinery grow with over 20%, with about 23%. Um, so a very, very strong year also in France. Followed by Spain, and we stay on the double-digit growth with about 12% growth here, not on the 2018 level, but is now after a dip starting to take off again. And here also, if you look upon um, the automotive, we had a small increase of 5% and metal of 20%. Um, so there, both of these major sectors were growing. Finally, Poland. The picture is a bit different, but um, it's also the fifth of the markets, that was a decline with 11%. But if you look upon it from a 10-year perspective, this was the second best year ever. Uh, this is compared with the year before that was extraordinary strong. And also in, in Poland, automotive went back and metals went up. So you can see more or less in all of the major countries, metals and machinery was really the segment that grew most last year. Automotive was a bit different in different countries, but uh, three of them grow and two of them had a, um, was more stagnating. So a very mixed picture of what we see in Europe, uh, and of course that's related to a lot of, of the different industries in it. Um, so what conclusion can we take so far? Well, the boom that we saw last year is now decelerating a bit. It's on a more moderate uh, level. The revenues in Europe are still growing, and this is based on the IFR quarterly statistics. Um, but the order intake in Q1 is now slightly down based on the statistics we have. So we have a bit of a flattening out from the extreme year uh, one year ago. And therefore, all this comparable, it's, I think it's good that we look upon them one year, but also take a 10-year perspective to, to look upon them in a bigger picture. So the outlook, I think this is no news for any of you, but of course there is a lot of uncertainties, uh, not only in our industry, in the whole world at the moment. We have the central bank policies, um, Chinese economy is softer, Political tension is, of course, something that we all experience every, every day. But for an outlook for Germany and, and um, the whole Europe, I mean, the backlog in Germany in mechanical engineering continue on a really, really high level. And we know there is a tight labor market. There is hard to get people uh, to do a lot of tasks today. So the general fundamentals on how this market will continue to grow in Europe stays very, very positive. So with that, I'm happy to hand over to the panelists and an interesting discussion. And thank you all very much.